Uh, Anthony, I'm going to start with you. Um, it's not a shock that uh, oratory, command of language, rhetorical skills are not something that is prominent in the current White House. <laughs> that said, you are very interested in language and the way in which language is used, the way language can be misused, and the way it can be used to persuade people. Did you start from the idea of looking at what Winston Churchill said in this period of time before you started analyzing where those words were going to get him? In, I think so, yes. I think every writer's um, you know, interested in the proposition that words count, matter, and can make a difference. Um, I started way back 10 years ago. Um, in fact, I became aware that uh, three of the greatest speeches of all time were written and delivered by Mr. Winston Spencer Churchill, um, all within the incredibly implausible period of four weeks. Um, to, for a political leader to have one of those speeches would be extraordinary. To have written three, um, asked a question, why, how, where did he write these speeches? What were the forces that compelled him? And I did a bit more research and it was nothing less than the collapse of Western and Central Europe and <laughs> massive domestic pressure to do a peace deal with that of Hitler. Just run that, that last phrase back again do a peace deal with Adolf Hitler. Winston Churchill, do a peace deal. Who knew? Um, I certainly didn't know. And I, so I had this idea, that's a movie, but I didn't really have the, the gumption or the hubris or the, the, the confidence to, to do it. So I sort of didn't, didn't really tackle it until after I'd done Theory of Everything, mm -hmm. um, had such a happy experience with that film that I thought, um, I'll give it a go. And if nothing happens, uh, if I mess it up, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> um, and uh, anyway, that's what I did and I finished the script and then I thought, mm, now I need some geniuses to come and join me in this. And I was richly served by some of the gentlemen you see before you. And Joe, I suspect you were uh, one of those first people um, in atonement. You'd already visited Dunkirk. Did you feel that there was a part of history that you didn't know, that you felt was worth sharing, that told the story that wasn't on the beach? Very much so. I mean, I, I, as you say, had looked at this exact period of time from a very different angle. And to read Anthony's screenplay and understand the, the kind of backstory of that moment in history uh, and to, to really be very surprised by it. And, and I felt that, that, that it was a story that I was very excited to, to share. Gary, I suspect when a call comes in about Winston Churchill, there's two polar opposite reactions. Bloody hell, what are you thinking? And bloody hell, yes. Is your reaction a little bit of both, that this is a great opportunity, but also a terrifying opportunity? Exactly, yes. <laughs> um, well, obviously, I have a, I could, I, I knew why Joe wanted me to cast me, because I have an, a striking resemblance to Winston Churchill. <laughs> But apart from that, um, yeah, you think um, uh, what a crazy idea. Then you think this is like being asked to play Falstaff or King Lear or something, you know. It's a wonderful opportunity. So it's a mix of excitement and, uh, and, and, and fear. Also, you're following in the footsteps of many, many great people that have played it before. So it's it's not like it, it was a it was a, a, particularly the last couple of years. It's a pretty crowded field. <laughs> how much reference is too much reference, and how much does the reference kind of belie the way in which we think Winston Churchill behaved, spoke, and looked? Well, you. I mean, I. You know, you sort of close your eyes and you try and think of Winston. You know, you think, okay, Winston Churchill, and then you're not sure if you're really, if 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 you're contaminated by those actors. So you you am I thinking of Winston or am I thinking of Albert Finney or Robert Hardy or? So you have to sort of move that to one side to begin with. Um, you do, you know, the reading, which is sort of you might say required, required reading. But um, what was fascinating and a revelation to me was going to the uh, newsreel footage mm -hmm. and seeing someone who was, um, who, who was energized and uh, had full of vitality, was, 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 uh, was, was dynamic 
and he has been, uh, Winston has been in the past, he's been represented in, later in life in infirmity or a, an older Winston, and you have this image of this sort of curmudgeon with his cigar and whiskey sort of shuffling around in carpet slippers. And this, this Winston, in, in certainly in 1940, was, uh, was a, a dynamic force to be reckoned with. Ben, we know that the king had a speech impediment. We really don't know a lot, or at least American audiences don't know a lot about what kind of person he was. How much history is there about him, and did you find a path in through reference that you found useful? Um, yeah, they, there's a lot known about him. I mean, you know, he's uh, the, the royal family, any member of uh, any monarch is certainly um, covered from to breakfast. Um, so um, the, 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 um, the most important thing was just being able to watch the, the, the man himself. Um, uh, there's a lovely piece of him at like a boys camp doing like a little sing-along thing and stuff like this. He was a true believer. He really believed in the old, in you know, in the the old line of monarchy. He and he had to uh, he had to do that. So and listening to his speech, yes, he and Lionel, who's um, Jeffrey Rush in the King's Speech, mm -hmm. had been at it for a while. So uh, if you take Colin Firth as a, as a sort of a starting point, they'd been working together for a couple of years mm -hmm. by the time you, you meet him now. And if you listen to um, the, the news, the speeches of the time, uh, you know, he, he's better at it than I am. But, um, you know, I try and make a stick of it. What kind of access did you have to the locations that are in part of the story? I mean, you can go visit the Churchill War Rooms today. I don't know if you're able to get into 10 Downing Street or you have to build that. What kinds of access did you get and what did it mean to the actors to either visit those real places or be able to create them as authentically as your production designer could? Um, we got into pretty much um, everywhere to research, um, apart from Buckingham Palace. Uh, but actually my dad had been to Buckingham Palace because he was the first person ever to get a medal from the Queen for, to ser for services to the art of British puppetry. So you might laugh, the, but the Queen was there a, gave was there him a, a medal. Second for person it. who got that? Medal? Yeah, my mum. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> it's true. Um, so we, anyway, sorry. Question. <laughs> serious. 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 I'm um, sorry. It's been a, a, a long uh, month. So yes, we did. We got into some extraordinary places, including Downing Street. And we're the first uh, film crew actually ever to shoot on Downing Street. Um, Winston, when he's going in and out of 10 Downing Street, is actually going in the real building. Um, David Cameron gave us permission just before he got booted out. He knew he was on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> sure, trash. Theresa play. May wasn't happy, but the <laughs> deal had been done. I'm on the way out, do what you like. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah, we weren't able to shoot in the House of Commons. Um, well, they gave us permission but, to shoot there, but they said no non-elected, non-democratically elected bottoms were allowed to sit on the benches, mm -hmm. um, which kind of didn't make sense. So uh, we <laughs> built that, and we built the war rooms, um, although the, the, the hall that Winston walks through and so on is, is the, the Palace of Westminster, the, the Parliament. Um, and, and everything else was locations, which was, which was great. I, I, I really enjoyed shooting on location again that idea, Joe, and I think this is true for the king too, the idea of doubt, of being open to different points of view, to actually see that you may not be right in your thinking and listen to other people, that seems to be a very important idea of the film. Was that something you latched on to as a director, especially in the scenes with the king, about who is and is not telling the truth or the, leading the right way? Um, yeah, I had a piece of paper, a um, little post-it note, uh, on the on the screen as I cut the film that just says doubt. Um, doubt for me was the reason why I responded to the material in the first place. I'd um, he had uh, doubts about the script. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had <laughs> doubts about myself. Um, I just I just made a movie called uh, was, mm -hmm. okay. So I just made <laughs> <coughs> I just made a movie called Pan and it had lost a hell of a lot of money and it had been universally slated, um, and I doubted myself enormously, and I doubted my position in the industry. I thought maybe um, I don't understand audiences, and um, I don't understand the industry, and maybe I should 
retire gracefully and just make puppet theatre. Um, as your parents did. As my parents did. Um, don't laugh. It was a, very, it was a yeah, fine yeah, art yeah, puppetry. Great, great yeah. puppet um, uh, so, um, so I was going through. I was going through a process of of extreme doubt, and uh, and then this script came along, and I thought maybe this is an opportunity to turn that doubt into something positive, and that seemed to be what the film was about. And that seemed to be what my journey in making the film could be about too. So, um, so that that crisis of confidence that Churchill suffers at at the end of the second act, I suppose, is, is or the end of the fourth act, um, is uh, is integral to the film. I think it's about the idea that doubt can lead to great. To, to wisdom is, is an important component in the attainment of wisdom. Um, and that's what I got from, apart from sheer entertainment, that's what I got from the screenplay. Gary, Ben, Joe, Anthony, thank you all for coming out.